Welcome to Celebrity Act Two, where John Coleman and I get to speak with Dr. Liz Lister about things of interest, uh, probably to everybody, but certainly to seniors. You bet. You bet. And Dr. Liz, right down the street from me is a new store for cannabis, and, and they make a big deal. It's CBD, and mm -hmm. it's not the hallucinogenic element of cannabis. Uh, there's letters for that, too. I don't know what they are. Yeah. Uh, and this seems to be very common. Now, this is California. And I know a lot of states have different rules and whatever, but cannabis, I guess, is the correct term. Yes. Is becoming um, very available. And it's not all by prescription for the mar marijuana hallucinogen. So right. exactly. give me a quick explanation of what's going on here. Absolutely. Be happy to. First of all, you're absolutely right. The terminology is being updated lately. Uh, we used to use the phrase medical marijuana. I think that's what you're talking about. Yep. And we now we use the word cannabis to refer to all of the different products. Ah. Uh, the two main ingredients in the cannabis plant that are considered to be yeah. uh, medicinal or have medicinal applications are CBD and THC. Uh, THC is the psychoactive. So that's what gives people the feeling of the high. Yeah. Right? CBD is purported to have a lot of different uh, healing uh, possibilities. Right. right? Uh, used, apparently used for pain relief. Um, and, and the popular form seems to be gummy bears, but they have all kinds of ways you can buy the CDB, CBD. CBD, yeah, no, I, yes, I, yeah. I've heard of people use it as a sort of like a salve or something for uh, joints oh, yeah. and things like that. So, but that's not yeah. the hallucinogen. Uh, that's not the THC. That's the CBD, correct? Well, it varies. It, oh. it varies. So, uh, cannabis is now legal to some degree in all 50 states of the U.S. Mm -hmm. However, still not at the federal level, and that's where the trouble begins. Uh, with a lack of consistency, a lack of ability for uh, universities that receive federal funding to be able to do research. So that's part of the challenge. Okay. We have, as human beings, this is so interesting, we have what are called cannabinoid receptors all over our bodies, at, to a great degree, all areas of our brain. Mm. One area of our body that does not have cannabinoid receptors at all is the brain stem, which is right back here. And that is where our breathing is controlled. So, for example, with more addictive drugs, and by the way, CBD is not considered to be addictive. THC is a little controversial, whether it's a true addiction. But, for example, with an opiate addiction, the reason people die when they have an opiate addiction is because it suppresses the breathing in the brain stem, whereas wow. that is not possible with any cannabis product. Interesting. Yeah. So that's a good, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that makes it, if you want to use the word, that makes it safe. And, and you can see, yes, you can see yes. why the proponents would, would uh, pitch for it. But it's, it's now becoming the CBD because it's a, 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 from my understanding, it's mostly used for pain relief. Um, it, it's becoming very popular. Well, what's interesting, John, is that the only use for CBD that has very, the, the strongest, most validated scientific studies is for a very specific type of childhood epilepsy. Really? Okay. And, and again, we're talking about calming the nervous system. All right. So lots of research being done for sleep, pain relief, inflammation. All those are very, very important. And I'm optimistic. I think we're going to end up discovering a lot more uses. But up until the moment, uh, the data is the most is the strongest for this specific type of childhood epilepsy. The other applications Again, the research is controversial, and the products that are out there are they're not standardized until uh, we get the federal level yeah. approval to be able to do more work, more studies. 
uh, more standardization of the products that are out there. So that's why I wanted to give our listeners a couple of tips on what to do because those products are there. You've got the store down the street. I have probably a dozen stores uh, in areas that I have been through. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're definitely popping up all over the place. Well, yeah, give us those I've, tips. I've, I've heard of a, a few of my uh, friends who are using, as I say, ointments and things like that. All the gummy bears, as John uh, spoke about. But I guess there's still um, uh, the CBDs are uh, basically an edible or application as opposed to uh, inhaling. Or smoking because I assume that exactly. that that anything that goes into the lungs probably uh, unless it's trying to correct a medicinal uh, issue that you're having with your lungs is probably still not a good thing to do. Uh, That's uh, correct. The, the research agrees with you on that. Uh, it's again when we're talking about the milligrams, I, I do think there's a very wide margin of safety for people to be able to try these and see if they experience some relief of mm. various conditions or support with their sleep, that type of thing. But uh, the, again, the, the, the dose can go up very high. I always recommend people to start really low dose. There are products out there that have one milligram, five milligrams. Hmm. Now we're talking CBD, okay, THC, hmm. you really have to be careful because again, that has the psychoactive effect. Right. Uh, l- let me just say a word about that because sometimes those products can be helpful they can be helpful for sleep, et cetera. People have tried them and, and gotten good results from them. What's really important, since you talked about, for example, if someone has used cannabis in the past and they've inhaled it, maybe smoking a joint of some description, uh, they're going to feel an effect from inhalation within two to four minutes. Uh-huh. But if they're using it in an edible product, the topicals are really, those are even harder to evaluate but we we have good data comparing the inhalation versus edibles the edibles could take 45 to 90 minutes to feel a difference so someone who has said well i took a hit off of a of a joint one time and i I felt it really quickly and then they try an edible and they don't feel anything a half an hour later so they take another one they are going to need to really be careful because again the inhalation high can yeah. last for up, maybe up to a couple of hours on average, whereas from an edible, it can last six hours or longer. Wow. Mm. So that's important to keep in mind. Sure is, yeah. So um, smoke it, don't put it into brownies or what? <laughs> just kidding. Well, just Eat have it. to be careful, just have to be careful. Yeah, the smoking, yeah. like Art was saying, has the potential lung damage just like cigarette smoking. So it, that's sure pretty much yeah. not gonna be uh, part of the upcoming research that I think we'll see in the future. There is a way, however, to vape and to use it as a plant extract. So there's there's oils and tinctures, and mm. those have been used in vaping devices. Again, one has to just be very, very careful. Uh, start really low. Uh, even with CBD, we just don't have consistent research that we can really rely on yet. Uh, but I, again, I think it's okay for people to try things that are going to help them feel better. It's quite difficult to uh, to be harmed by it. Mm-hmm. Well, the the uh, the effect of the THC um, when it takes hours because you've inha- you've ingested it instead of inhaled it. No, CBD yeah. CBD is ingesting. THC is inhaling. TH? No. 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 It can be mm-hmm. any of uh, the above, oh, really? any combination. You, you've yes. never had marijuana brownies, Art, I can tell I have, I have not. I, you know, I wasn't a hothead like you were. Uh, someday I'll tell you the brownie story. Okay. Somebody brought them to work. And it, okay. it, was, it seemed like a lot of fun until somebody got really, really sick. Mm. That's yes, that can happen. Yep. Nausea, and, wow. even even fatigue, obviously irritability. It can it, people can potentially not feel good. Yeah, yeah. So mm. what I was getting at is, uh, are you? Does the research show why uh, the ingestion form of THC uh, takes longer and, and to to feel the effect? And does it stay with you? Because it's a lot of people say you smoke a joint, you have a great high, and it's all gone. You feel so much better. You know, maybe you get hungry, but you you feel so much better. But
but with the ingestion form, uh, my experience through this work related thing that happened years ago, what it's not the same at all. Hmm. Right. So inhaling goes into the lungs and then straight into the bloodstream. Done. Ingesting an edible is going into the stomach. It has to be absorbed. Very important, and I want to make a comment about this in a second, is that it then goes through the liver, right? And that can affect some functions of certain medications, depending on how much is going through the liver. Then it goes through the gut. And so the onset of the absorption into the bloodstream is quite a bit slower than direct inhalation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's part of it. And then it also stores in the fat. So that's very important for people who are concerned if they're, they're going to get tested at work, okay, have to watch out for that because it stores in the fat. So for example, it may not show up on a test. It might last, let's say, I always used to be taught 30 days. However, it can be after that window of time if it's stored in their fat cells and they did went out and did something as simple as some kind of exercise regimen for a, like an exercise workout, and it yeah. mobilizes and burns those fat cells and releases uh, particularly THC that was stored uh, in those fat cells that could then show up on testing. So mm, lots, really? lots to watch out for. It's not wow. to be so, done. So literally like months relight. later, you could get have THC in your blood and for a test. That's right. Even though you mm. might not have had uh, the THC for, for many months. That's right. That's exactly right. For example, if someone loses weight and then they're burning the fat stores that they're carrying, right. then sure. that can release it. So yeah, so anything that can release that fat could potentially yeah. uh, reactivate it. So that's now that's, to keep in that's mind. not the same as the CBD, the non-hallucinogenic uh, part of cannabis. The, the one that I keep thinking of as uh, people are using for pain relief and help them go to sleep. If it right. if that is ingested, and it, it seems to me more often it's ingested in gummy bears than it is a pat used a patch or does does that if it's if it's stored in the fat like the the THC, does that matter? Because it doesn't have a hallucinogenic property to it. Does that maybe it doesn't matter at all? These are great questions, and I do think that eventually we will have good answers. Uh, but right now, it's not a very clear, well-studied science. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I do hope it ends up uh, approved at a federal level so that we can get things uh, standardized, uh, get the research in good shape. I think that that's going to be necessary for that to happen. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Well, I hope so too. It, it's odd, I think, that the, um, the the fact that marijuana, I'll call it marijuana, but cannabis has has been on a path now for many years, mm -hmm. a path toward towards legality. Yeah. And yet, the federal government hasn't made that step to get involved, do the funding, do the research, all that stuff that we expect the FDA to do for us. Exactly. Yeah, well, that'll be great when that happens. Other countries are, are ahead of us. Canada yeah. has a lot of research that is uh, very beneficial uh, that we're learning a lot from. So hopefully the U.S. can get everything up to that level. And yeah, I think they, I think the, the U.S. is still mired into uh, left versus right. Uh, uh, and nobody wants to... Uh, 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 make it legal and therefore having caused uh, our kids to be uh, going wild, even though it was legal for many, many, many years before it was illegal. Right. So, you know, it depends on who's in charge. But anyway, so the, the bottom line is well, that well, it, it, pe people shouldn't feel guilty by using CBDs. Uh, they, 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 right. It's probably safe enough for them to try and to just go slow. Correct. Start low, go slow, big margin of safety. And uh, we we will have good science uh, that will be available soon. Great, thanks thanks for uh, clar clarifying what we know now, and we'll certainly revisit this as more information becomes available.
You bet. Awesome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.